How y'all doing? No, sir. You don't get to ask no questions now. Just right. answer. My name's Larry King, K-I-N-G. And Mr. King, where are you from, sir? From Walterboro, South Carolina. How long have you been? Are you originally from Walterboro? Yes, sir. And how old are you, sir? 46 years old. If you would, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury a little bit where you work. Do you have children? Yes, sir. I have uh, two sons, 23 and 21. I have a four-year-old grandson. Um, I've worked for Big Group Technologies. I am now employed uh, in Spartanburg for Renfro Brothers. I've been up there for two years. Thank and you, sir. Are you supported by anyone here in court today? Yes, sir. I have my son over here on the far side next to my uncle, my mom's brother, his wife, my cousin, and my ex-wife. Okay. And All right. Thank you, sir. And you said that you have children, two children. Is that right? Yes, sir. Were you involved in your kid's life coming up? Did you raise them? Uh, me and my wife got divorced, um, but yeah, I was absolutely in their life. In 2014, they came and uh, moved in with me, and they stayed stayed with me on up till they got moved out of the house. Okay, so from 2014 on, you say you raised those children? Yes, sir. And you were involved in their life up until then? Yes, sir. Okay, did you have problems related to that? Anything? No, sir. Mr. King, are you employed now? I think you said you were. Uh, yes, sir. I've worked for Renfro Brothers in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Okay, and have you had a, a pretty steady history of employment? Yes, sir. What do you mean by that? Um, I've had five jobs in my life. Okay. And have there been gaps when you didn't have them, or you always work? I always work. Okay. Thank you. It's been a... about drugs, methamphetamine. You've sat through it all. Have you heard that? Yes, sir, I have. Well, you're not charged with a drug offense. You're not charged with anything to do with methamphetamine, but states want to talk about it a lot, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions about that. Yes, sir. All right? You doing okay? You all right? Yes, sir, I'm okay. <clears throat> Your Honor, do you need a drink or anything? You need some water up there with you? I'm okay. If you decide you do, let me know. I think the court will indulge us on that, all right? Okay. So they've talked about this methamphetamine. Have you ever used methamphetamine, sir? Yes, sir, I have. Okay. And the judge, I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the witness talked about various usages people have. Do you have a pro ha in the past, have you had a problem with methamphetamine? I did. And what do you mean? How do you define a problem? Um, I was a drug addict. You were addicted to methamphetamine. Is that what you tell me? I was addicted to methamphetamine. Okay. And uh, early on, during the selection of this jury, one of the jurors said they knew you and stood up and said they were in a 12. I guess they missed the anonymous part about Narcotics Anonymous. <laughs> Absolutely. But one of them stood up and said they knew you from the 12-step program. Do you recall? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you, in the past, struggled with your addiction? Have you sought help? Have you tried to get help? I did. And uh, for the last two years, I went. I moved to Spartanburg. and in a recovery, a Christian recovery-based center, and been in a program up there, and I've worked and lived in a recovery house, you know, with uh, other clean guys that were trying to, you know, just been where I've been and trying to put the Lord first and do the next right thing. All right. So, um, you look a little different today than what you did in the video that most of us watched. I know you didn't watch it, but um, you look like you put on some weight or some size. Is that right? Yes, sir. Does that have anything to do with your recovery? Yes, sir. Just uh, putting God first, getting clean, and trying to be more of a family man and doing the next right thing. And when, when the doctor was talking, she said that uh, methamp methamphetamine or methamphetamine had sometimes been prescribed for uh, weight loss. It, it, like I say, you don't look like you've lost any weight since then. Have you put weight on? Yes, sir. Are you healthy today? Yes, sir. Are you clean today? Yes, sir. How is it 
that you can tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that you've always worked, you've had five jobs your life, you've always been gainfully employed, and in the same breath tell them that you were a, uh, a drug addict, a methamphetamine addict. I was a functioning addict. Um, I used daily um, to function, and uh, it was just a part of my life. And, uh, when you say you used as a, a functioning addict, tell me what you mean. Um, I had to have it to go. I had to have it to work. I used it um, to do anything I've done. And were you able to work when you used this substance? I was. Were you able to, to, to drive or whatever just to, to meet your normal obligations? I did. Okay. And uh, well, she talked about tolerance. Had you used enough of this stuff to develop a tolerance to it? Absolutely. Okay. And... Uh, you said day to day, as a functional uh, drug addict, you used enough of this substance to keep you going and allow you to function normally? I did. Okay. And did that condition, and I understand you said you'd been in a 12-step program and you had sought some help prior to that, but did that condition continue at least off and on up until the day we're here talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. And subsequently, you've gotten to where you described the day. Is that right? Thank God. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Do you know, lady seated at that table over there, Miss Panaman? I think I'm saying it right. I do. Okay. And how do you know her? We used to date. Okay. And when did y'all first commence to date? 2015. Okay. And did that last as a continuous relationship up until the day on this, or had y'all had times apart? Uh, no, nah, we dated for a few years, and we had broke up six months prior to we started about talking about five weeks up so, to this happen. Yes, sir. So y'all, you say you started back talking about five weeks prior to this day? Yes, sir. The day in question? August 5th. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did y'all live together? No, sir. Okay. And you know where her home was? Yes, sir. About how far was that from your home? Probably 15 miles. 15 miles or so? Maybe, yes. And you knew the, uh, and I'm, but, but you knew this little girl? Yes, sir. As far as the child goes, had you observed Miss, uh, the other defendant, and I, I'm just not going to try with the name, but the, uh, had you observed the other defendant and her interactions with this little girl? I did. Okay, and was there anything about what you saw with the way she treated the child or took care of the child that caused you concern? No, sir. If you had seen things like that where you thought caused you concern, what would your reaction have been? I would have got away from her. I would have left her alone and probably reported her. If you were in a position where you did observe a child, not hers, but just someone else out in the world, a child who was mistreated or treated badly at the hands of another person, a man or a woman, what would your reaction be? I'd address it immediately. What do you mean by that? It depends. Um, if I seen a man abusing a child in any way, I'd um, stop I'd, it. Yeah, I'd stop it. All right. <laughs> On this particular day, you uh, you, you didn't want. I noticed you didn't watch this tape in court. Is that right? I didn't. Have you ever watched it? No, sir. You lawyers have had it forever. Why haven't you watched it? So, I just can't. Even prepping to come here today, did you watch it? No, sir. The uh, the state has test or, excuse me, the witnesses for the state have attributed statements to you and this the uh, other defendant, which say that she spent the night before this child died at your home. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And the uh, what was Christina there also? Um, yeah, yes, sir. Okay. And you said that you had talked to or been involved with Chris, with Miss Panalanigan. I can't help myself. In the past, um, what was your relationship with this child? Uh, she was just my girlfriend's daughter. Okay. Yeah. 
Did you, this, this is a child who had special needs and needed special care. Did you wash this child? Did you bathe this child? Somebody did. Did you? No, sir. And I, it, it's tough, but this child was in a diaper. This young girl wore a diaper and wasn't able to clean herself. Did you clean this child? Did you change your diaper? Were you responsible for things like that? No, sir. Did you feed this child? No, sir. Did you put her to bed or get her up in the morning? No, sir. Were you financially responsible? Did you pay any child support or anything for this child? No, sir. And this, and this may have been answered, but was she, was, she really, was she your daughter biologically or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. Regardless, the, uh, the night before, they spent that night at your home. Is that right? Yes, sir. And... Tell me how the mor in the morning you got up and you and Miss, or I'm sorry, did you go to bed that night? No, sir. I've been up all night. Okay, was that partly due to that methamphetamine use? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you got up in the morning, did you and Miss, you and the other defendant, have a conversation which led to what we saw on the porch, that is you carrying the child out? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Tell the ladies and gentlemen what that con you I, I don't want you quoting it, but just tell them what the conversation yes, was sir. about. Just about her being involved with somebody else, and um, we had talked about it, and some things broke my heart, and I just uh, asked her to leave. And All right. So it was about basically what you would call infidelity. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And did, in the course of that conversation, did she confirm that, in yes, in fact, yes, yes that sir. had happened? Yes, sir. Okay. And when she said that, yes, that had happened, what was your reaction? I was just hurt. You were hurt? I was hurt. And, and what, that was your reaction. What did you do then? I mean, what, what, what did you say or what did you do? I asked her to leave, told her I'd call her later. Okay. Did you lose your temper? Did you smash anything? I mean, Absolutely I mean, not. You're a big fella. I mean, you were no. a big fella even then, but you're big now. Absolutely not. You didn't break anything in the house? Did you grab her or shake her or anything? No, sir. Okay. You asked her to leave? Yes, sir. And did she agree to leave? Yes, sir. Okay, and then what happened next? I put a child in the car. All right. Well, you say you put the child in the car. Did you, did you carry her out? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. And why were you the one to carry her out? Uh, Rita has a, a extra kidney or has a lot of trouble, health trouble, and her daughter was getting heavy for her, and so she asked me to carry her. Okay. And thinking back, I know you say you hadn't watched that tape, but thinking back, would there be anything inappropriate, wrong, or rough about the way you would have treated that little disabled girl? Man, absolutely not. Never. Can you imagine a circumstance where that would be your reaction? No, sir. Okay. So you stated you carried the child out, and we've seen the tape. Um... Placed her in whose car? Rita's car. Okay. And where did you put her in the car, if you recall? In the, behind the driver's seat, on the driver's side, in the rear. Okay. And you, you stepped away then? Did Mom come and, like, get her settled or seat belt or something like that? I think so, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, think carefully. Well, if you need to. Was the car running when you put the little girl in? Absolutely. You say you're from Walterboro, is that right? Yes, sir. We know, we've heard, and everybody else knows, it gets hot in Walterboro, yes? Yes, sir. And you grew up here. I know the uh, state went to Great Lakes <clears throat> to prove to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that if you park a car in the sun in the summertime in Walterboro, it, uh, it gets really hot. It gets too hot. Were you aware of that before the scientists testified? Yes, sir. You figure everybody in Walterboro who's got a car knows that that happens, whether or not they hear from that scientist? Absolutely. All right. Would you have left that little girl in that car if that engine wasn't running and the AC wasn't on? Never. Never. Even with your feelings hurt, sir? Never. All right. So you put the little girl in the car and you say the engine was running. Can you tell me what happened next? Just next. I went back inside. Okay, well, did you and she have a con... 
Let me ask you this. Up until the time y'all discovered that little girl's body, was there anything unusual or scary about this day? No, sir. It was another normal day. I thought everything was, I had no idea that anything was not were, normal. Were you trying to memorize the events moment by moment? No, sir. Are there things about that day that you may be a little unclear on or foggy at this point four years down the road? Absolutely. Okay. Well, if, we, if somebody told you they watched that tape and you and Rita had a conversation in the yard after that child was put in the car, is that something you would deny or something you'd just say, I don't recall it? No, that's, I, I remember. Okay, well, tell, I'm asking you about that conversation. Asking her. I just asked her to leave and um, told her I'd call her later. That's, that's all I asked. Okay. And did she, in fact, get in the car and leave? Um, I didn't know, sir. Excuse me? No, sir. Okay. What did happen? Um, she followed me back inside. Um, what were y'all talking about at that? You'd ask her to leave. She didn't leave. What were y'all, what, what was going on between you? Um, she was just trying to plead with me and talk to me and um, just trying to make things right. Okay. And did y'all talk back and forth about it? Um, a little bit, yes, sir. Okay. You said you had your feelings hurt? Yeah. Well, you said she's heartbroken. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. And while y'all's in the house, we just put the cards on the table. Did, did you make up? We did. Okay. And you decided to move on? Yes, sir. All right. Um, at some point in time, and you, you don't have to give me minute by minute because ladies and gentlemen of the jury have seen the tape. They know how long things took and et cetera. But at some point in time, did Miss, did, did the defendant at a, at a other counsel table, did she attempt to leave? Um, yes, sir. Okay. And what happened when she tried to leave? She came back in and told me her keys were locked in her car. Said the keys were locked in the car? Yes, sir. And what was your reaction to that? Not my problem. You cheated on me. Get out of here. No, I, I tried to help her get in the car. I didn't know him. I didn't know that anything other than that was wrong, to be honest. Okay. Was the car still running? The car was running. Were you worried about the situation? No, sir. Not, not really. Okay. And uh, if you had known, and I know you've seen what we've all seen, if you'd had any inkling that that's what was going to happen or was happening, what would your reaction Man, be? I would have knocked that wind out of that car and got that child. I had no idea. Huh? Right. So you made an effort to get the child out of the car, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, or to get, to get the car open. Were you successful in that? Um, not right away, I wasn't. Okay. And how you tried is not important, but do you recall what you did to try to get into the car? Some of it, yes, sir. What did you do? Um, I tried to uh, get in. I think I tried to pry the door. Tried to uh, offer to knock out the sunroof, but Rita didn't want me to do that. Um, you say you offered to knock out the sunroof? Yes, I did. Not your car? Not my car. Okay, but but you offered to knock out the sunroof, and she said no. Yes. Sir. Do you recall what she did say other than just no? It's four years later. I know yep, you didn't remember. She um. Objection here, sir. Repeat the question. Did you ask her if, to, if she want? Your answer was, excuse me, earlier Here's you stated. Repeat the question. I'm going I'm to take a different question if it's okay. Pardon? I'm going to take a different question if it's okay, right. Your Honor. Your answer earlier was you offered to knock out the sunroof. Is that right? I did. After offering to knock out the sunroof, did Ms. Panelanigan respond? She, I, no, I'm not asking what her response was. I'm asking, did she respond? She did. And after her response, did you knock out the sunroof? No, sir. Thank you. Did y'all then come up with a, uh, a different plan? Yes, sir. And what was that? She said she had a spare key at her home. Okay. And were you at this point just done with the operation, or do you continue to try to help? I continued to try to help. And what did you do to try to help? Um, I went and took her to get another uh, spare key. Okay. And when you left, was the engine running? Yes, sir. And was it running when you got back? Yes, sir. And did you think that AC was on? Yes, sir. 
when you got back and you had that key fob. And did y'all retrieve a key fob? She did. Okay. And when y'all got back, were you able to pop the, uh, and just pull up with the key fob? That solved the problem. Did you pull up, hit the fob, and unlock the door? No, sir. Why not? I think the batteries were weak in it. It wasn't, it wasn't working. Okay. It wasn't unlocked the door. So y'all hit it, hit it, hit it, unlock, yeah. unlock, and it wouldn't unlock it? Yes, yeah, sir. You had a real problem now, so at least she had a real problem. Is that fair? Yes, yeah, sir. What did you do to address that? Um, I called Robert from Stokes Lock and Key. To, do you know someone there? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Robert, the owner. Okay. So you called the owner of Stokes Lock and Key. And what was the purpose of that call? So he could help me get in the vehicle. And if, in fact, you made that call, would that be reflected on the videotape? I mean, would you, were you in the yard when you made Absolutely. that call? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. So you called Stokes Lock and Key, and you spoke with a person you knew there and asked how to get in the car. Is that your testimony? Yes, sir. And what did he tell you? He told me it was an emergency key and a key fob. Okay. And the emergency key and the key fob, people may know what that means, but apparently you didn't at the time. So what does that mean? Um, it was a key inside the fob that you separate it and pull out a key. And, uh, and you were never able to unlock it automatically? Never, so, never. But after speaking with the gentleman at the, uh, the Locksmith Company, what did you do? Um, he told me to pop off, told me to retrieve the key. I got the key and told me to pop off the face off the door, handle socket, unlock the car. And were you eventually able to unlock the car? Yes, I did. And it wasn't with that key fob? No, sir. It's just old-fashioned, stick it in and turn it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And I, I'm not going to ask you to describe what you saw when you got in the car. People saw that on the, uh, the video and in the pictures themselves. But uh, when the child got out, when the child was, was taken from the car and you knew she was deceased, what was your immediate reaction? Call 911. Did it occur to you that maybe you were in trouble? No, sir. Any time up until, I mean, any time during the course of this investigation, speaking with police officers, speaking with anybody else who talked to you about it, were you like, oh, my goodness, I need to cover something up? Never had an idea, man. No, Excuse sir. me? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So you called 911, and when the information you gave them, was it correct? Yes, sir. And when law enforcement arrived, did you talk to them? Yes, sir. And was the information that you gave them correct? Yes, sir. Before law enforcement arrived, if we watch that video, it looks like the front door is open. You reach in for a minute. Are you grabbing something out of that front seat of the car? No, sir. I reached in to turn that car off. How'd you turn it off? Uh, a button. It's it's got a push button on it? Yes, sir. So you watch that tape. We should see you reach in and turn that, that car off. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. The, uh, the vehicle itself, are the windows tinted in that car? Yes, sir. Are they a dark tint or just like a... Very dark. That comes from the factory. Very dark. Can you see in that car? No, sir. When law enforcement got there and later they took you down to the uh, police station, is that correct? Yes, sir. Did anybody ever tell you, you don't have to talk to us, you've got a right to remain silent, all that sort of thing? Yes, sir. And did you sign the form and say, I understand it? Uh, absolutely. And then did they keep talking to you for several hours? Yes, sir. Did you talk until they said you don't need to talk anymore? Yes, sir. Did you ever lie, try to cover up Never. for yourself? Never. One moment, John. You charged with murder. Did you murder that child? No, sir. You carried that child to the car and put her in the car. You're accused of causing great bodily injury to this child. Do you feel like you handled her correctly and appropriately? Yes, sir, I did. I asked you earlier, is there any way that you cause harm to any child? Never. I love children.
And for some ungodly reason, I have no idea still, you're charged with conspiracy. You're aware of that. Uh, yes, uh, jury is disregard the comment of counsel. Close questions. Thank you. You're also charged with conspiracy. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you and, uh, I'll tell you, Rita, with no disrespect, did you and Rita and get together and plan some way to kill this child? Absolutely not. Did y'all get together and plan some way to hurt this child? No, sir. Can you imagine a circumstance that could have occurred? No, sir. Mr. King, these other lawyers probably got some questions for you. Try to answer them the best way you can, all right? Yes, sir. And again, if you, are you good? I'm okay. I'd say now, in the order, who's cross-examination, who goes first? Which way do you want to go, Your Honor? I don't know. I'm posing. Mr. Phillips, do you have cross-examination? I'll be glad to go, Your Honor. All right. yes. Let me make sure I understand your testimony, and I guess this is either based on your memory of the event or your comprehension of the event at the time, right? Your testimony today? You yeah. haven't looked at the video. You haven't no, done sir. anything. This is either from your memory of what happened or from your comprehension of that while it was happening. Is that fair? Yes, sir. You would agree that everything that was done to that child was done with you and Rita. Is that fair? Yes, sir. You put the child in the car, Rita was standing there when you did, correct? Yes, sir. You were standing around the car with Rita when the child was inside the car, correct? Yes, sir. You went inside the car. That's what it's be allowed to answer. He did. He, you went inside with Rita. Uh, inside the front porch together, did you not? We did. Pardon me? I did. And while you were in there, the child was still out in the car, correct? She was. Now, is it fair to say, and I know we've had some testimony, it's a pretty hot day, it's in August. Your house, correct? Yes, sir. And your house is um, outside. The car was parked, actually, wasn't under shade, wasn't it was in direct sunlight. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you called 911, as you did, first of all, and I want to make sure I'm clear about this, you say that from the standpoint of turning on and off the car, when you put the child in the car, the car was on, but you turned the car off after you got the child, or after you, both of you got the child out of the car. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're sure about that? Absolutely. Again, based on either your memory or your comprehension of the event that day, right? I'm sure about that. Okay. Um, you got a security system that works <coughs> Yes, sir. It's actually pretty sensitive, is it not? Yes, sir. It's got some infrared. It's got some other stuff. It's picking up everything. And all those are run cameras around your house, right? Yes, sir. In fact, I think at one point in time you could actually see a bug fly by and set the camera off, right? Yes, sir. And it was motion detected, correct? Yes, sir. So if there's any motion around your house, it's going to pick that up, right? Right. Okay. Let me go to, if you could go to 1115 on the camera. Rita came back to your, all right, first of all, you were with Young, Rita. Young, can we wait until 1115 if that's what he's going to address? You were with, you were Young, with. Young, can I get a rule? Overruled, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. You were with Rita starting that Friday, is that right? Yes, sir. In fact, you went over to her house, just like I think Ms. Honeycutt or Ms. Lindsay said, you went over to the house and picked her up in your truck, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that was later in the afternoon, right? Yes, sir. So she was with you that entire time? Yes, sir. This is at the same time that I think you also said you were on pretty much a meth vendor, were you not? I was. You were? I was. In fact, you were using constantly, were you not? I was. And in fact, you also said you hadn't slept in a couple of days at that point, right? Yes, sir. Do you even remember the last time you slept up until that point? Thank you, Ms. Um, Thank you for Thursday or Friday. Okay, so for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you are doing that all three of those days when you're staying up. Were you doing that with you? I don't recall. You sure? Yes, sir. You're going to stick with that? Your Honor, that's the answer. That's the problem. Objection. I apologize. I apologize. I'm no rule. I mean, go ahead. Yes, sir. I'll rephrase it. 
Did you not tell law enforcement that Rita, in fact, likes to put her meth in her coffee and drinks it that way? Did you not tell them that? Well, I may, maybe I did. May have mentioned that. Okay. She's with you the entire time on this three-day bender. You're using meth. Your testimony, you don't remember if she was using it or not, but you know that when she does use it, she puts it in her coffee? But that's Less your testimony? I speak, I speak for myself, sir. Well, unfortunately, you answered my question, sir. So my question was, when you're doing the math, is Rita doing it with you? She was using. Thank you, sir. Can you back up, please? No, I want to see the I'll get to that. I'm not anywhere close yet. So on this three-day bender that you and Rita are on, did she sleep at all, or were you both up the whole time? No, nah, she slept. Okay. So you heard the testimony from the... Uh, actually, the toxicologist that talks about, and she actually talked about your under influence going up and coming down. And in fact, I think she even actually mentioned uh, that while you're on it, taking it, you're you're staying up. That's not unusual. So that's pretty consistent with your testimony of what happened to you. Is that right? Yes, sir. Would you also agree that when you're on this, and I know you're not on it today, but let's make sure you were on it these days, right? Yes, sir. I was. It's fair to say that you had problems with. Your decision making, your critical judgment, your cognitive abilities. Yes, sir. So everything she testified to as the effect of methamphetamine was pretty much what you were experiencing. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then probably in fact including the increased libido. Yes, sir. Jack, it's irrelevant. Function is overruled. In fact, when you went into the house with Rita for about an hour or so like this, I think you told the council you all were making up. You're going inside to have sex, were you not? We did. And that's why the child's still out in the park? In the air conditioning with the car running. Okay, well let me go back now to turn the car, the car was on when you put the child in the car. Absolutely. And you turned it off before the law enforcement got there. Yes, sir. You go to 1115, or is that somewhere right now? <coughs> Can you see the monitor from where you're standing? Yes, sir. That's the car we're talking about, correct? Yes, sir. This is your front porch? Yes, sir. And speak into the microphone to these? Yes, sir. And you also testified that your monitor is pretty sensitive, so it's picking up. I was just picking up motion now, but we really can't even see. I guess that's from the malls or anything like that. Any of that stuff is going to set it off? Possible. Possible, yeah. And were you here when the officer testified that up until this point, there had been no motion around that car. Yes, sir. When you, you, she, you picked her up from the house. You took her back to the house and she came back. What time did she get back? I don't know. I mean, it was at night though, right? Um, like Sunday night? I think, yes, sir. Okay. I'm just going to ask you why we're waiting on that. Car's not on now, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. Right. This is you and Rita coming out of the front door. Yes, sir. This is you carrying the child. Yes, sir.
Sunday night. Did you have her child with her? Yes, sir. Did she bring the child inside the house? Yes, sir. Would this have been sometime, what, around 8 or 9 o'clock that Sunday night? I don't recall, sir. Well, it wasn't midnight, was it? No, sir. And she brings the child in with her, does she not? Yes, sir. Did she go back out to the car after that? She just stay with the child and you? I don't remember, sir. When did, uh, that Friday night, did she go to sleep? Did she go to sleep? Yeah. Yes, sir. She lay down. What time did she get to sleep? Um, I don't recall. All right. Go ahead and play it. <clears throat> this is you and Rita in the back of the car. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Pardon me? Yes, sir. Back door is open, correct? Yes, sir. Front door is not open, is it? No, sir. I'm aware of, I think so. It's the first time I did. Is this you and Rita together? Um, yes, sir. And I'm assuming this is when you guys, when you're upset with her because she cheated on you, right? Yes, sir. Pardon me? Yes, sir. is I'm going to fast forward this and I'd like you to just keep watching it but let's fast forward the speed since we already know what's on it.
see this, or if this goes too fast, you let me know, sir, please. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't remember, sir. <clears throat> no question, you're the one that put Rita in the car, correct? Uh, Christina, yes, sir. You also told the 911 operator she'd been in the car maybe one, maybe two hours? Yes, I wasn't sure. I looked at Rita and when I was asked that question, if you see on the video, and she give me that time. I had no idea how long she'd been in there. I think that's the effect of meth or were you just trying to minimize it? Um, I had no idea, sir. talking about? Do you remember? Not everything. I was exhausted that morning, sir.
No, sir. No, sir. At that point, I was um, I was asking her to just go, and I would call her later. And I think she was just. Could y'all ask the witness to speak up just a little bit? Speak up, sir. Yes, sir. At that point, I was still asking her to leave and trying to convince her that I would call her later. Um, I was exhausted, and um, I just didn't want to deal with it at that moment. Side. Is that right? Yes, sir. And I know you haven't seen the video, but it would surprise you that you stayed inside the house for thir about 30 minutes or so after that? I guess. Okay, and you don't come back out for a while, but going back out there at all, do you? No, so I laid down. Okay, when the video speaks for itself on that, you laid down. Um, were y'all going back in just now? Were y'all going back in to have sex? Um, we went in, I think, to make up. Pardon me? We went back in to make up. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Um, when you turn the car, according to your memory, when you turn the car off, according to you, before the police got there, you reached in the front door and pushed the button? Yes, sir. You just watched this video? Sir. You've got a sensitive motion sensor camera that picks up everything with... Temporary lighting in the whole bed. In fact, bugs that come up pick it up. There was no motion on that camera up until 11.15, which the motion that was set off is by you and Rita walking to the car. Did you see anybody go into the front door of that car during this time that we just looked at? No, sir. Nothing else?
Mr. King. Yes, sir. When you called 911, your immediate, immediate response was, oh, my God. Yes, sir. You were in a state of absolute shock. Absolutely. Your next response, they said, what is, your, uh, what is the address of your emergency? Hey, man, I got an emergency. I mean, real quick. There wasn't any intent to cover up anything at this point. No, sir. Because there wasn't a plan to do anything. No, sir. So your initial response was to call 911. Your initial response to the operator answering your call is to say, oh, my God. Yes, sir. Your next response, my daughter was locked in the car. She had the AC on. My girl locked the keys in the car. We had to run her house to get the key fob and come back. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, what you need? Y'all can pull it up to, what was it, 12? Now, Mr. King, I understand you didn't come back outside, but Rita did. Yes, sir. I'm trying to excuse what happened, but Rita did come back outside. Yes, sir. Rita coming out of your house. Yes, sir. That's Rita opening the back door, checking on her. Or, excuse me, that's next. That's actually Rita sitting down in the front seat of the car. Now you see a time miss because there wasn't any motion. So actually, good. You want to go back one second? Thanks. So... So at 12.29, Rita comes out and sits down in the front seat of that car. And she doesn't obviously get out immediately because the camera skips because it's a motion sensor camera. So she stayed in the front seat of that car for a period of time. And you don't know whether she cut on the car at that point. No, sir, I don't. Because she went out to check on her daughter. Yes, sir. All right, now she comes back. She's been out of the front seat. And she opens the back door. She says something to Christina. Looks at the gauges of the car. You see her pause and look yes, in the front sir. before she closes. And one more time, if you don't mind. That last part. Rita sitting in the front seat for a period of time, then Rita getting out, then Rita opening the back seat, and then the front front door again, looking at the gauges, and walks back in. Yes, sir. That's what the video shows. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Again, I'm not... This should have never happened. Absolutely. Mistakes were made. Yes, sir. You both should have done things differently. Yes, sir. Now, you told Officer Vonerdorf that Rita loved her to death. She did. Is that true? It is. Is that your hand on the Bible to God? She loved her daughter? It is. And that's your statement here today as it was then? Yes, sir. On the scene to the police? Yes, sir. You saw how she acted with her daughter? Yes, sir. Would Rita have wanted Christina to die in any way, shape, or form? Absolutely not. Now, there was a phone call made to Eddie Hayward. And what did y'all call Eddie Hayward about? Um, Stokes Lock and Key. 
two different people. So, again, you had, well, I guess she meant, I'll, that's for her. I'll stay with you. Yes, sir. You called Stokes Lock and Key, the local locksmith. Yes, sir. And what did, what, how did that go? Um, uh, the key fob wasn't unlocking. It wasn't working. I guess the batteries were weak. So he gave me instructions and told me of the way Mert's key was and told me what to do to get inside the car. Now, the jury saw yesterday y'all shaking the car. There hasn't yep. been any explanation for that because that seems strange. You found that out through Robert Erebus. I'm thinking so, yes, sir. Well, I didn't remember really shaking the car, but my attorney had addressed that. So I'm assuming that maybe he might have said something to maybe reset. I don't They'll hear from Robert. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, with that, at this <clears throat> point, your position clearly is that Rita loved her daughter to death. She did. And there was absolutely no position in y'all's part in terms of wanting Rita to die. That's Ab clear. Christina, absolutely not. Christ excuse me. Christina. Absolutely. Now, as far as her being in that car... It was your belief the car was running. Yes, sir. Would you or Rita ever have left her in that car if y'all thought it was not on? Never. No further questions. Any uh, thank you, Mr. Lord. Just, just, I don't think I asked you this earlier, but clarification sake. Are you in your car, Rita? Are you and Rita in a relationship now? No, sir. Have you been in a relationship since that day? No, sir. Thank you. No more questions. No, no, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, at, first of all, you weren't out with Rita at 12.30 when she walked back out to the car, were you? No, sir. In fact, it, don't, it didn't look like you were on the porch or anything, right? That's right. Do you know what you did? Correct? That's correct. So, your opinion about the car being on or off at this point you don't know one way or the other, do you? Actually, I don't. Your testimony is the car was already on. Yes, sir. Okay. And you going to stick with that, or are we changing now to Rita no, turn sir. their car? Rita did start that car. She what now? Did. Rita did turn the car off. I didn't turn the car off. When did Rita turn the car off? On. Oh, I'm sorry. Rita turned the car off. When did she do that? I'm apt to be honest, I'm not sure, sir, when... When she turned and started the car. You didn't go out here after this point, so you don't have the cars on at this point or not one way or the other, right? I don't. All right, let me go to exactly 12.30.25, please. And is it fair to say, sir, that at, if she's turning the car on now, the, char the child has still been in the car for, at this point, an hour and 15 minutes? The car was running when I put the child in the car. Okay. Okay. So that's not her turning the car on. I don't, she's already on, right? I don't know what Rita's doing right now. I wasn't outside. Right. Is it fair to say she's opening both doors? Say she's open the front door? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, this is the first time I'm talking to this. <clears throat> okay, it's 1230. She walks back to the car. Is it fair to say she's opening the front door? Yes, sir. Back door at the same time. Yes, sir. I wonder why you would do that unless you were airing out. Yeah, I'd ask for a strike. Solicitor's last I'm comment. sorry, I should have put that in a formal question. Can you come up with an idea why somebody would open both doors at the same time unless they were trying to air the car out? Calls for speculation, Jan. I'm know. asking. I don't I'm, know, I'm, sir. I'm rejecting that it calls for speculation, I'd ask for a strike. Thank you, Thank you.
Anything further, Mr. Phillips? Just one question. When you watch that video, we can pull it up again because this is mainly for the jury. And go back to, I guess their main contention is the fact that two doors open. When you watch this video, and because there's really two interactions, her sitting down in the driver's seat for a period of time, and then the second one where she goes back to the car and opens the, both doors, she peeks her head in and looks at the gauge of the car, specifically looks at the front part of the, at what I assume would be the gauges of the car. Yes, sir. That's what you see. Yes, sir. It's not that she just opens two doors. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything further? No, Your Honor, thank you.